Good morning and welcome. This is Mission Control Houston. On your screen now is a live look at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, located on the eastern shore of Virginia. Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket is preparing for a liftoff at launch pad 0A to kick off a cargo mission carried out by the company Cygnus spacecraft. Launch is expected in about 20 minutes from now at 4.50 and 16 seconds a.m. Central, 5.50, 16 a.m. Eastern, with a five-minute launch window. The rocket and the spacecraft will launch to the southeast and be visible up the eastern seaboard. Everything is on track with the rocket for an on-time launch. If you take a look at the top of your screen, towards the very top of the rocket, you can see an American flag and a swan emblem. Just inside the fairing there sits the Cygnus spacecraft we're talking about today. It's carrying 8,200 pounds of scientific experiments, food, hardware, and supplies to the people living aboard the International Space Station. The Antares rocket is below with the first stage fully fueled. The weather for today's launch is forecast to be 90% favorable, even better than yesterday's predictions. According to the weather briefing held earlier today, temperatures at Wallops are in the mid-60s, and weather officers do not expect weather to be any kind of constraint for today's launch. This is Northrop Grumman's 18th commercial resupply services mission and following launch, Cygnus is expected to make a two-day journey to the International Space Station. It'll be robotically captured at approximately 5.50 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, November 8th at the hands of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, backed up by Josh Cassida, both inside the station's cupola robotic workstation. Man will use the Canadarm robotic arm to grapple Cygnus and then turn over operations to robotic specialists here in Mission Control who will install it into place on the Earth-facing port of the station's Unity module. Admin LC on Countdown 1. Admin on Countdown 1. Yeah, Admin, there's a request to hold, five-minute hold. At L minus 11 minutes, we will hold CDT at 10.39.16 and resume CDT at 10.44.15. Copy that in work. And NASA TD, LC on countdown one. Go for TD. Yeah, TD, we'd like to hold uh, for five minutes at CDT 10.39.16. Hold at 10.39.16. And resume at 10.44.15. Resume at 10.44.15. That's a good copy. LC prop please. Uh, countdown 1, step 397. We have an actual F1 level of 11 out of 11. LC copies. Check step 397.
We do have a guest from Northrop Grumman, Christina Holona. Uh, Christina, do we have you have you here with us? Hi, yes, I do. Thank you, Kelsey. I'm very honored to be here this early November morning. As a Navajo woman, I'd like to wish you all a happy Native American Heritage Month. And thank you all for joining us to see a successful interior launch and sequence mission to the International Space Station. Thank you, Christina. We're uh, getting ready for launch, but we're not quite there yet. What do we expect in these final moments of the countdown? Yeah, so as you see the rocket there, um, there's still a few uh, pre-launch milestones that are left to right before launch. For example, we are currently at the tail end of our propellant loading operations. So when, the, uh, when that is complete, the team will top off the propellant and do some fuel adjustments. Then a final go, no-go poll will be completed to proceed with the final countdown to launch. And approximately three minutes or so before launch, the auto sequence will be initiated. And uh, what that does is it turns on the Interior's internal flight computers take over and commands the vehicle. So the auto sequencer then goes through some final steps of prepping the vehicle for launch, and then we'll proceed through the final countdown. And after launch, what performance can we expect from Antares? What are some of the post-liftoff milestones? Yeah, so after liftoff, our team will monitor some, uh, quite a few post-launch monitor milestones too. <laughs> to be exact. The first milestone we'll be waiting for are the main engines to burn for approximately 200 seconds or so until uh, main engine cutoff. So once we get to that main engine cutoff, you'll hear you'll hear that as Miko <laughs> um, from uh, from the control room, and we'll go into a short coach right before we separate stage one and stage two, which we call the upper stack portion of Antares. Then we'll continue to coast a little bit longer, um, about 30 seconds or so before the fairing separation. And then uh, we'll have an internal separation where the stage two flies out of the external upper stack. Once the stage two is clear of the upper stack, the stage two will actually ignite for a two and a half burn, two and a half minute burn, and that puts the Cygnus really close to their orbit. And then it goes to ensure everything is stable. Then uh, Cygnus will be released into desired orbit. And then um, after Cygnus is released, they'll kind of go through a, a comms check. We'll go through some comms checks, and then about an hour or an hour and a half after that, um, the solar rays will be uh, released. Uh, solar rays will be out and open for um, for it to coast on up to the International Space Station, and then it'll take about Cygnus will take about uh, nine minutes or so to get to orbit. Transfer Cygnus to launch mode. And Cygnus is set to make a two-day journey to the space station with a critical job of resupplying the space station. What's the importance of Cygnus's capabilities in a mission like this? Yeah, for um, Northrop Grumman um, has played a critical role in keeping the International Space Station oper operational since 2013. And Cygnus is unique in its ability to carry away large amounts of pressurized cargo and its primary mission to deliver equipment, supplies, and scientific experiments to the astronaut crew. On this particular mission, Cygnus is carrying about 8,200 pounds of cargo. Um, NG-18 will again include capability to perform an ISS reboost, and the periodic reboosts are required as part of regular maintenance um, of this station to counteract the effects of gradual atmospheric drag and uh, ensure the station maintains proper orbit. So our team um, actually performed the very first operational reboot during the NG-17 mission. mission. So if requested, NG-18, um, if requested by NASA, NG-18 can perform um, one or more reboots up to the ISS. And uh, Cygnus also provides some, some trash disposal services as well, if need be. <laughs> Christina, thank you so much. And prop lead LC on countdown one. Go for lead. Uh, you are go to abort the OCCS sequencer. Copy and work. LC prop lead launch abort has been uh, confirmed.
and launch team. We have kicked off abort safing six. Starting on page 142, Alpha 22, properly verify correct HPGN2 and helium valve configuration during OCCS abort six. Uh, it worked. We were expecting a launch of the Antares rocket and Cygnus cargo spacecraft today at 4.50 a.m. However, uh, we are no-go for launch and are going to do a 24-hour recycle. I'm going to try again tomorrow. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the weather, ground systems, rocket, or signets itself. Um, this is actually something that's going on here in our Dulles control room. Um, that's what Northrop Grumman is using to control the Cygnus spacecraft after payload separation. Um, they had been hearing a fire alarm going off in their building, and it was confirmed and required an evacuation of the control center staff. So because Northrop Grumman is unable to be in the room for launch, we will be scrubbing this launch today. LC Ops 1, removal of global launch enable verified. And site control, disarm tell rapid retract system. And steps are ready and work with uh, LCA on countdown 2. Copy site control. LCTLM, archiving stopped and restarted. Check step Alpha 27. Ops 1, transfer FTSA and FTSB to external power. Copy and work. LC Ops 1. FTSA and B external power on, FTSA and B internal power off. Ops 1, transfer avionics power to external. LC Ops. Once again, we will not be launching the Antares rocket and Cygnus cargo spacecraft from NASA's Wallops flight facility today, unfortunately due to a fire alarm in the building of Northrop Grumman's Cygnus control room. Uh, we're not able to get off the ground today. Weather is still looking good. The vehicle is looking good. Um, that was the only issue being tracked today. And for the safety of those in the Northrop Grumman building, we decided to call it for today. The backup launch opportunity will be tomorrow, Monday, November 7th at 5.27 a.m. Eastern. Uh, CMD, standby. Ops 1, disable ME1 and ME2 TVC and EHA buses. LC Ops 1, TVC and EHA buses disabled. This cargo spacecraft was set to deliver more than 1,200 pounds of cargo to the astronauts living aboard the International Space Station. It includes fuel, scientific experiments, and tools that they'll need. Um, however, the International Space Station is stocked for several months in advance of additional cargo, so a delay like today will not be a significant setback to the crew. LCTLM, DCOM configured for closed loop telemetry. Two. LC, this is CMD. I can confirm A30 not required. Yes, uh, unfortunately, due to a ground issue in uh, Dulles Control Center, we are scrubbing the launch for Cygnus today. Uh, we're going to try again uh, tomorrow. Power off. Elect two. Elect two is go. GSO. Hey, Katie, uh, we're watching the uh, AMI TV, and uh, um, we are waiting for tomorrow's launch. Thanks for the update. FTSA, external power off. FTSB, external power off. FTS power off. FSO, secure CT site and verify RF silence. And work.
The space station crew is awake. Um, it's their day off today. It's a weekend for them. Uh, they're still in communication with mission control here on the ground. They did have live views of today's launch available to them. And our Capcom today just informed the crew that uh, we are standing down from today's launch attempt of Northrop Grumman's 18th Commercial Resupply Services mission. LC, CT site keyed down. RF silence verified. Copy FSO, check step Alpha 37. Alpha 38, launch abort was a manual scrub at L minus 11 minutes. And that is due to a fire at the Dulles MCC and loss of the Dulles MCC. Ops 1, Alpha 41, remove external power from transmitters and SMI buses. LC Ops 2, in work. Stage 1, telemetry transmitter, external power is off. Motor cone transmitter, external power is off. Avionics telemetry transmitter, external power off. SMI power A and B, external power is off. A41 complete. Copy. Elect 1, verify transmitter power off. LC Elect 1 in work. LC Elect 1, transmitter power is off the vehicle. And NASA PM, cease C band interrogation. Turn off TM recorders. And NASA PM, LC on countdown one. NASA PM, go. Step Alpha 43, CC band interrogation, turn off TM recorders. Roger, in work. Site control, verify or set valve 5258 to 0% open. And valve 5258 is at 0% open. Prop 1, place OCCS into SAC mode, stop charging of engine helium bottles. In work. LC, NASA PM. Go ahead, PM. Sir, interrogation cease, recorders off. Copy, check step Alpha 43. LC Prop 1, 
Engine bottle charging stop. So we are live at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport Launch Pad 0A, and the Antares rocket and Cygnus cargo spacecraft are on your screen now. We were anticipating a launch at 4.50 a.m. Central Time. However, we had to scrub the launch today. We stood down from the attempt, not because of anything wrong with the rocket, the countdown was performing nominally, we're moving through all the milestones, however, there was an issue in the Northrop Grumman Cygnus control room in Dulles, Virginia, they experienced a fire alarm and personnel had to evacuate the building, they were unable to catch the launch today and they needed to control the Cygnus cargo spacecraft at payload separation. Expected eight minutes and 52 seconds after the flight. Um, our thoughts are with their team there, and their safety is of the utmost importance. So we are going to try again tomorrow. Is not required. Thank you, LD. We'll be back live with you on NASA TV with coverage starting at 4 a.m. Central Time, 5 a.m. Eastern, for a launch at 4:27 a.m. Central, 5:27 a.m. Eastern. That would result in a rendezvous and capture Wednesday, November 9th, with NASA TV coverage at 2.30 a.m. Central Time, 3.30 a.m. Eastern. Capture is expected around 4.05 a.m. Central or 5.05 a.m. Eastern. Uh, Continuing on after that, installation coverage by robotics controllers here on the ground will begin at 6.15 a.m. Central, 7.15 a.m. Eastern. Hey, fair. Again, that is on November 9th, assuming a successful launch tomorrow. Go ahead, TLM. For clarification, a step A40 is not required. Right now, launch teams in the Range Control Center at NASA's Wallops Life Facility are getting the rocket ready for a reset tomorrow for launch at 4.27 a.m. Central, 5.27 a.m. Eastern. Here in Mission Control, we're going to continue on our activities uh, for the International Space Station for today, and we'll be in position tomorrow once again. Thank you for joining us. This is Mission Control.